This is the case of Shane Barton. He's currently missing in Rochester, Washington. His first name is Stephen, but everybody calls him Shane. He is 54, 5'8", short brown hair and brown eyes. On March 9th, his family reported him missing from his residence in the 7600 block of Scatterview Lane Southwest in Rochester. Uh, he was last seen the night before. We're going to go through a timeline here. On March 8th, 6.30, Rachel, the wife, receives a text from Hayden asking if she could pick up the kids and whatever. None of this is super important. It's just all of the details leading up to the last time that he was seen um, between 6 and 7 p.m. Everybody ate dinner together, and that was Rachel, Danner, Hayden. Danner and Hayden are the children, two of the children, and Brooke is a girlfriend of one of theirs. You may see Brooke's name in here as well. Same day, 7.30 p.m., Rachel took a shower, went to the shop that's on the property, and she was sleeping there temporarily because she was taking care of some goats who needed physical therapy every two hours. Hayden says she saw Shane outside. She told Shane that she would keep the light on in the laundry room if he was going to come in and shower. So my understanding is Danner and Hayden stay in a two-bedroom trailer on the same property, and that's where they go in and shower I believe. 8.30 p.m. Hayden heard Shane come in to take a shower. Shane then went to the RV to go to bed. Now the next day, March 9th, Rachel wakes up. She takes Hayden and Brooke to their Brooke's house to drop off some possessions. 7.48, she arrives at the Starbucks to use their Wi-Fi. She messages a friend and asks if they could loan her money until the bank opens so they can pay their phone bills. Uh, her husband had let her know the day before the phones were off due to non-payment. By 8, she gets home, takes the dogs out to go to the bathroom, puts them back in the RV, and then she went into the shop to take a nap. 10.30, she wakes up, starts a fire, takes another dog out, fed and watered the goats that were in the shop, and did their physical therapy with them. 11.30, she grabs her oat milk that was in the uh, area that she was in and heads out to the RV. She smells coffee. She sees the coffee that Shane makes her every morning sitting on the counter. It was still hot, but it did have an ice cube in it. She checks for Shane. She doesn't see him anywhere. By 12.45, she goes back to the Starbucks to use their Wi-Fi, texting to Danner, asking if he was working and asks him to come home and so now it is march 10th and two dogs are brought in to search their friends of theirs search dogs and they didn't find anything the police also come and pick up shane's phone march 11th um, search and rescue drone operator and bloodhounds search their property march 12th Rachel Danner, along with family and friends, are searching areas that hadn't yet been covered. Uh, apparently, this is a pretty large property, so they're trying to cover as much as they can in this amount of time. This is Rachel, the wife's first post. This is extremely hard to post, but you will be seeing or hearing about it. Shane is missing. He's been missing since this morning. We've looked everywhere. He has no phone or wallet with him. The sheriff's department has come and taken our info. Our marriage is fine. We have no ideas or clues as to what happened. All our vehicles are here. He left on foot or for some weird deal with someone, but he had no way of contacting them. Sheriff isn't doing a search party, but we are looking into it. It's weird because we've looked so many places already. A friend brought his search dogs and is looking. All of this previous account was directly from Rachel. Now, the following is posted to findshanebarton.com. Uh, Shane apparently has three older daughters uh, who are not with Rachel, and there seems to be some personal issues between all of them that's going on. So there are two Facebook pages plus a website now. One of the things that Rachel posted Quote, his girls are awful and saying nasty things about us, which is inappropriate. He doesn't like his girls and he doesn't want to be around them. 
end quote. So there's tension there making communication very difficult. These details were provided on the website that was set up by the daughters. The Thurston County Sheriff's Office called Shane's disappearance suspicious. All vehicles and ATVs and UTVs are accounted for. Rachel is claimed Shane is wearing a size 11 hiking style Danner boot, black socks, and a non-hooded blue sweatshirt, blue jeans with insulated lining, a gray Under Armour hat, and a Carhartt jacket, could be carrying a 45. This firearm is missing from the property. Uh, Shane does have bad hips, but they don't know how much that affects his mobility. Family did have cameras on the property, but they weren't set up yet. On 311, Danner had stated Rachel called him at 143 to let him know she couldn't find Shane, asked if he could come home. On 322, in Rachel's updated timeline, she states she texted Danner to ask if he was working, and then Danner texted back and confirmed he was. She informed him what was going on, and he was trying to get home. So you can go to the website and read more about that. On 322, Rachel also says she received a Venmo payment on 39 from her friend to pay the phone bill, but according to her Venmo history, no payment has been received since March 1st. Now, these are discrepancies that the daughters are seeing, and because there's very limited communications, they're trying to figure all of this out. In addition, they don't live on the same property, so that's making it very difficult for them to confirm and get accurate information. They're basing everything off news and screenshots at the moment. On 311, Rachel included in a since deleted Facebook post, I know that you, Shane, are in excruciating pain with your hip and I feel bad you don't have your medicine to help you. But then on 317, she replied to a comment saying that's incorrect. That was that someone said he was on pain medication. He wasn't. Uh, I did go read that and it said something about he would take CBD at night. On 3.11, Rachel stated the phones didn't work the evening of 3.8 because of a billing issue, but Rachel also told people who were at her house that she and Shane were exchanging nudes the night before he allegedly went missing. So we don't know. Then it has been reported by neighbors that a large amount of marijuana was growing on their property, uh, their last one, High Valley Lane, and they suspect that they are doing the same at the current residence. Could that be an issue? Some missing pieces. We know that the first statement pertaining to when Shane was last seen was that Hayden waved to him Thursday morning 3-9. That has been deleted and the story changed to Hayden waving to him Wednesday night 3-8. Shane still is not registered in the NamUs data bank uh, they don't understand why that is, or Washington State Police missing database. Danner said as soon as Rachel noticed Shane hadn't taken his wallet, phone, or keys, she believed it was suspicious. Danner and Rachel have also posted on social media that it was normal for Shane to leave without his belongings. So the older girls are becoming very concerned on what could have happened to him, how he just vanished into thin air and left most of all his belongings at home. And there is a firearm missing from the home as well. Rachel says that she believes Shane left on foot or for a deal with someone, but to date the other party hasn't been named or disclosed what the deal was or where. The phones all had a billing issue with no service starting the afternoon of March 8th, but seemed to be turned back on March 9th. No one other than immediate family and their closest friends have been able to search the property besides officials, and Shane's three biological daughters have been denied access to assist in searching as well. Uh, all except for one, she was allowed on the property for a very brief time, but... Rachel believes that she's only there to gather intel and make false posts on social media. So just so that Shane Barton isn't, you know, forgotten in all of this, it's a, it's a very sensitive issue with his family. Um, I'm going to put his information here again. These are photos of him with his hat. Um, 
I'm going to put his missing poster here and it'll be on my community wall as well. If you are anywhere in that area, feel free to download it, print it off, or go to the Facebook pages. And again, there are two different ones. First one, find Shane Barton dash missing person. And the other one is missing Shane Barton. Uh, the website itself is findshanebarton.com. This is to just give an idea of what the property area looks like. And the latest update that I've seen from his daughter, Brandy, is that his daughters, they've had over 100 people out trying to search on foot. They've had over 50 people out handing out flyers. Again, they have the website. They were able to set up a Jumbotron at Supercross, and they've had six different locations searched. And they are trying to work with law enforcement as well but there's information of course it's an ongoing case that they can't really share too much information uh, but again due to the issues between the two groups here if you want more information you can go to either of the facebook pages or the website that i mentioned